here we are. I'm here today, Angler's Paradise, once again. But today, I'm going to be fishing the Mystery Lake, just here. It's a small little lake with one island in the middle. And um, it's a mystery as to what's in there. <laughs> well, it's not actually really a mystery anymore. Anyone who's fished it as much as I have will know pretty much what fish are in here. But there are small fish, there are big fish, and it's as big a mystery still as to what you're going to catch in this lake as much as it is any other lake here. Because there are so many different types of species and colours and varieties and types of fish. But to be honest, as I say, every lake is a mystery. Um, this is one of the um, first swims you get to on the lake. I don't really like to fish around this area. Um, reason being is in the water here, you've got well, if I go down, there you are. Hard to do when you're doing it back to front on the camera. This sort of weird plant, bean, a beany kind of plant. I'm not sure what it is, but it runs all the way along the edge of here. And it sort of carpets across the top of the water. There's even a bit um, on the island and uh, around over there. Uh, and if you get a fish in that, because they do go underneath that, of course, um, there's no getting that fish out. I tell you that for nothing. It's too much of a risk for me. Need some much stronger gear. Today I've got my little match float rod with me, um, which is fine for the smaller fish, but there are some big beasties in here as well. So if I get one of them, it might be a bit of a tussle. But currently I'm the only one on the lake. And um, yeah, I've picked my, my, my usual spot. It's the swim I really, really love to fish. Just down below me, the next lake down there, that is the specimen carp lake. Can't see any anglers on there at the moment, but there's loads of lovely lilies you can uh, cast baits in and around. And from up here, particularly on a sunny day, um, in the middle of summer, you can stand up here with your polarized sunglasses on and you can see the massive, massive carp uh, swimming around. Lots of 20 pounders, 20 pound pluses, I should say, in there. Loads and loads of them. I've never actually fished it. 10 years of being here. I've never fished for specimen carp lake, but as I say, I do come here for the ornamental species more than any of the others. Um, and perhaps the carp fishing falls to the wayside a little bit, which is a shame because it shouldn't do really. I should um, at least set aside one day, shouldn't I? At least for carp fishing. Anyway, this is the swim I like. Still has some of those weird bean plants in the water, but they're way across the other side. And my usual tactic here at Angler's Paradise, wherever I'm fishing, the Magic Lake or the Float Lake or the Tench Lake or any of the lakes really, is to head for the margins. There's a lovely little margin there and there's a lovely little margin down here. And I'll feed both of these swims up. We have little pellets and maggots. Um, fish pellet on the hook, um, a maggot on the hook. Maggot you'll get all sorts of things. Pellet tends to get out the slightly bigger species of fish where you have to have a longer weight of course. Um, that's what I'll be doing. I'll be setting up here. I'm not sure whether to put the old shelter up. It's been raining pretty heavily all week long. I suppose I should do really just in case. You know, you won't do it and then it'll start pouring with rain and you'll get absolute soaking. <laughs> anyway, I've just bunged all my, my gear on the ground here. I'm going to get it all set up, get ready, get settled and start enjoying a fabulous, fabulous day of fishing on the Mystery Lake at Angler's Paradise. first fish you're likely to get out of not just Mystery Lake but any of the lakes here at Angler's Paradise are these absolutely gorgeous golden rud. Look at that. Beautifully beautifully coloured rud. Really spotty on both sides. There are tons and tons of them in here. You liken them to having minnows on a river. There's so many but um, as you can see they're, they're well worth catching. Um, just for the sheer colour of them alone. Wonderful, wonderful fish. I'm going to 
catch quite a lot of these, I think, because they're all across the surface of the water and you've got to try and get a bait through them. And I'm fishing maggots at the moment, so it's it just, the water boils with them. <laughs> um, but there are some rud in here of decent sizes. Um, as you can see, as soon as maggots go in, there's like a little orange shimmer across the surface. Yeah, I'm feeding two swims, one on each side of the uh, water, so I'll catch one fish out of here, and I'll catch another fish out of there, another fish out of here, another fish out of there, and hopefully it won't spook the fish too much by doing so. It's a good method to do, to be honest. I don't always do that. To be fair on here, you don't really need to do that. But if I catch a big carp out of one, it might startle the fish off, which means I've got a second swim I could be fishing whilst the fish come back in again. Uh, there have been a few carp moving around. As soon as I put some bait in this right-hand side, the water just clouded up with silt. We showed that there were some fish down there moving around, which were probably carp. The water's only shallow in the margins here. It's deeper down the other end of the lake, near Monk. <coughs> which is probably why I'm going to get pestered by um, the golden rud all day long. But I don't mind being pestered by golden rud, because they are... I, I love them. I absolutely love them. Um, and, you know, maybe I'll get some really good ones. Who knows? Who knows? It's a mystery, of course, on Mystery Lake. <laughs> Keep seeing me and going away. Can't blame him, my ugly mug. <laughs> it's only a matter of time from that swim I mentioned earlier. All the clouds and clouds of silt coming up. Oh, but a carp uh, snaffled. Oh, God, I hurt my arm that. Snaffled my maggots. Oh, what a lovely fish, too. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Still lively. I get covered in water now and keep doing this. Oh, just really lightly hooked as well. That was lucky to get that one in. Now, let's see if I can do, do this. Get the net right here so he doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> there we go. Gorgeous, gorgeous linear mirror carp. Look at that, fought like a train. It's quite shallow this end of the lake, as I say. So the only place they've got to run to is left and right they can't really go down anywhere but real tackle testers on the old four pound line and a match rod but certainly worth the effort yeah it was definitely you chewing up all those maggots i threw in wasn't it clouding the water up oh, thank you very much all right pop you in there and get covered in water at the same time and get you back into the lake ah, if you want an idea of how shallow the margins are that i'm fishing in Here's the margins. Let me get my landing net out. And that's the bottom. That's how shallow it is. So that's the sort of water I'm fishing in, right close in. Um, so the bait hasn't really got too far to fall at all, which is why I've been getting quite a few rud. This here is one of the reasons why I love fishing the Mystery Lake. And this fish is in quite a lot of the lakes here. But I know that I can generally winkle a few out from here. Now I'm a, a mini species fanatic as you well know. And this fish, whoop, a little gudgeon, is certainly one that I love to catch. And I love catching them here at Angler's Paradise. Again, it's one of those fish that, that no one really, ooh, don't jump. No one really, really sort of targets here, um, but I certainly do. I love a little gudgeon, me. This is only a little, little tiddler. What a fantastic little fish. <laughs> Gorgeous. A real school of gudgeon down there now. I've been the maggots and little pellets I've put on. Really enjoy that. Just shows that I'm fishing on the bottom. That's what the pigeon eat. So I must have come to them. Just like that. It's like a bigger gudgeon this time. Now, the 
The problem I've got here now is that my right hand swim is far too full of fish. Perhaps I put a little bit too much bait in and that's just brought them all in. I don't know. Um, the left hand one is sort of pacing away quite nicely, but the right one, there's just carp central all over the place and the fish are smashing through the swim trying to get any bait I put in. And the problem there lies here. I don't know if you can see, but just there, that is where I hooked this fish. Now I have no doubt he was going for the bait, perhaps missed it, and the hook is just caught on the side of his uh, head. It took me a while to get one in. This is called foul hooking, foul hooking a fish. And um, I really don't like doing it. It's not one of my favorite things. Sometimes it just happens, and that's one of them things. It doesn't do the fish much harm, though obviously be better in the mouth because it's easier to unhook. This one's just like a little nick in the side of his uh, face there, uh, which being barbless is taken out extremely easily. Um, now, when fish are in this sort of situation, you'd think, oh, that's fantastic. You know, there are obviously so many fish, you can just keep catching them. You don't need to hook them in the mouth. But I personally don't like doing it. This little guy, beautiful fish, look at that linear mirror, is going to go back. And I am going to stop fishing my right hand swim. I'm going to let it die right down. Um, no more bait is going to go in there at all. Um, I'm going to fish the left hand side, which is a as I say, it's a little bit slower, getting lots of uh, goldfish and gudgeon and um, little carp out of there. And I'm going to let that just, I'm going to let the fish disperse. And if this swim becomes really, really busy, I oh, shall go back. I want to catch fish, and I love that the fish are all coming in to see me, but I do not like catching fish um, foul hooked. And that is why these fish are coming in foul hooked. I think that's been the second one I've had. And, um, you know, was it once? Blame for me once, foul hook me once, <laughs> shame on you, foul hook me twice, shame on me, or something like that. Actually, it's nothing like that, I've just made that up. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna let that just settle right back, fish in this side, and if both of them start going mental, I'll just go for a little walk, have a little wander off. I want to catch fish, but not at the cost of, you know, damaging the fish in any way, even though it is a teeny tiny little hook, um, it's just not worth it. Okay, this is weird. This is a brand new phone. Um, I got it, I changed it uh, about three weeks ago and it's just sat here on the stand um, until I have something to film. And I've just looked at it and it's just turned on and started recording of its own accord. And <laughs> How embarrassing. What if I was picking my nose? <laughs> In the old days, and it still holds true, just by holding your hand up to the phone starts it recording um, I believe this is also the case for the photos which is actually really handy if you're um, wanting to take a picture of a fish for example you can set it so it's it takes a photo after five seconds or ten seconds so it gives you a chance to put your hand down uh, but you just put your hand up and it'll start the process for you and if you're filming and you've like you're at a distance and you've got the fish there and you want to switch a phone this is a phone by the way phone camera on just hold your hand up to the camera and it'll start recording so I don't need to press record then walk around set things going all I've got to do is be there ready hand up and that's actually really really good for anglers because you want to minimize the amount of time that the fish is out of the water before putting it back in again and that just cuts a hell of a lot of time out if you walk all the way around set everything up get ready for taking a nice video or a photo realize you haven't um, set the camera going you've got to get up and walk around and press the thing and come back again that's all extra time when the fish could be uh, unhooked had its photo taken and put back into the water again um, so there's a little tip for you if you didn't realize that about your mobile phones if you want to take a photograph or start a video off oh fishing over there down by my feet 
they are just churning away at the water, completely ignoring the fact that I'm here. Popping a prawn on, as I fully suspected, has resulted in the big bully carp coming in. Beautiful fish though, look at that. Look at those scales on this lovely mirror. Hell of a fight on the light gear. Wonderful fishing. Oh, that was a hell of a run. Gotta be another carp. Might have to steer clear of these prawns. I want to catch something other than these guys. There's no mystery to the mystery lake when you're fishing prawns, apparently. <laughs> it's going to be a, a sucking great big carp every time. Um, but why is it called the mystery lake? If, essentially, every lake here is a mystery lake, you never know what's in them and you never know what you're going to catch. In fact, near enough, every lake you've ever fished is going to be like that, isn't it? Unless it's stocked 100% with a certain species of fish. Well, the story goes that while Zig was away on a holiday, or so he tells, um, he came back to discover that this lake had been dug and stocked with fish. And it's the mystery lake because Zig didn't know what fish were in it. No one told him. And so ever since, we've been fishing it and trying to fill in his gaps in his knowledge. Although, it's still a bit of a mystery to him, I think, as to really what it was genuinely in here. And it is a bit of a mystery to us anglers even still when we're fishing here as to what we're going to get next. I mean, this has to be a carp, right? <laughs> but you don't know until you see it. You genuinely don't. What if it's a massive, great big tench? What if it's a barbel? What if it's a catfish? What if it's a chub? What if indeed? I've been fishing long enough to know the feel of a carp on the line over one of them. <laughs> Each fish has its own signature sort of fight where it's on the line. You perch, you get the head shakes, and the jag, jag, jagging of a tench is, is far different to the heaviness and runs of a carp. Oh, by the way, the fish that were feeding right below my feet are still here. <laughs> I haven't been feeding them. They're just down here rooting around in the mud. One of them just spooked then. Is fair enough when all this nonsense is happening. Lift and wind, lift and wind. It's all very good hooking a fish, isn't it? But actually, playing it into the bank is a different story sometimes. So many anglers lose their fish, including myself. I'm no, I'm no exception to this. I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I've been fishing for over 30 years and I still learn and I still make mistakes. But so many anglers will try and bully a fish in too quickly or wind the reel when the fish is running and uh, therefore break the line or pull the hook. But the essential rule is when the fish is going, you stop. Reeling that is. And when the fish isn't running, you can lift the rod to bring them back when the reel is doing that, line's pulling out. No really. No, no, no. Don't wind. <laughs> um, this fish is going back over that way again. But now I can pull the 
fish and the rod back this way and reel back down to the fish to gain that little bit of line that he took and it's a never-ending battle of the fish going and you trying to bring it back and the fish going and you trying to bring it back and the fish going and eventually it's a battle of patience really well it's a battle of will for the fish he's trying to get away and he gradually tires and tires and tires the angle of the rod acts like a big spring and um gradually gradually tires the fish out uh, it's called angling of course because you're trying to keep that angle of the rod f from the fish so that there's always that big bend and curve in it so it's always getting more and more tired as it comes into the bank um, but yeah for the angler himself it's patience it's just trying not to get overexcited with a decent fish coming in or even a small fish coming in that's the bank he's just come right in and head butted the bank <laughs> um and it's just that battle of wills really isn't it it's not usually the fish which pulls itself off in nice open water like this it's the fact the angler gets a bit too impatient wants to fish in a little bit too quickly Put a little bit more line out oh just when you think they're tiring they're not ah, here we go i think i think he's done now i think he's nice and tired and in the net yeah, so it's just that, that patience. Yeah, they'll come, they'll come. It's another socking great big carp. <sighs> right, let's see if I can unhook him. Just in the lip here. Nice barbless hook, so you can just grab the hook, pull it out. Easy job. It's all barbless hooks here at Angler's Paradise. And there we are, is the, the creature giving me all the aggro. Lovely, lovely common carp this time. Lovely, glorious fish. Handsome. And of course, once you've had a look at the fish, taken a picture, release them nice and carefully back into the water. If they've given a real good tussle and count themselves and they do look tired, you could just leave them in the net and just let them, you know, get their breath back, get their energy back, and then you can release them back into the water. That one still had plenty of energy. <laughs>
beautiful common carp. Look at that. Must be carp o'clock along the Mystery Lake today. That time of day when they all start coming into the margins and feeding. This is probably one of the ones from down there, by my feet there, which just swam off to the right. But what a lovely, lovely fish. Lovely, lovely common. <sighs> clouds make it seem later than it actually is but I'm calling it a day I've had a really lovely time here on the mystery lake and the mystery lake still gets to keep some of its mystery occupants from me for another time and I'm sure there will be another time what about my little carp swim down there well they're all still there <laughs> milling around and feasting on little bits which I've thrown in which were no good to me I had some floating sinking pellets they were meant to be sinking and they were floating and i figured you know they've kept me company all day and kept me busy uh, watching them and very happy watching them so they deserved a little treat why not have one on me but as i say the mystery lake gets to keep its name and be mysterious for some of those species i know a few of the species i haven't caught today and um they will be there next time. They will be there next time. Anyway, I'm going to head back to the villa, get nice and warm because it has got quite a bit colder and head out fishing another day. Definitely, yes. Um, if you liked the video, give it a like. Subscribe to my channel. There's loads of other videos you can like as well. <laughs> no. um, and I will see you guys again another time on the bank catching some wonderful, wonderful fish. Bye.